with two black eyes. I walked in the kitchen where his mama was cooking. And she looked and said, boy, what happened to you? He said, well, I was down there at Pastor Resella Harper's church. <laughs> and the Crystal Coast Choir was there, and they were singing. And he said it was getting good, and everybody was clapping, and people started standing up and getting with the choir. And he, she, he said there was a lady in front of me, kind of a large lady, had on this long flowing dress. So she stood up, and when she stood up, she had a wedgie. <laughs> He said, Mama, it looked so uncomfortable. And you always taught me to help out when I can. He said, so I reached up and I pulled it out. He said, and she turned around and hit me in my eye. She said, well, boy, how you get two black eyes? He said, well, she was so upset about it, I stuffed it back in. We have to admit, some of the funniest things that we've seen happen in church. <laughs> and it's all right to laugh about it. Some folks come to church so stoic and so staunch. Praise God. And you look at folks and say, come on, let's praise the Lord. And they sit there like, you know, I go in brothers and y'all need instructions? <laughs> Amen. But we just give God the glory. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Did you help me out a little bit? I'm going to do something I don't normally. I'm going to sing this a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I, was, I, was, I meant to mention, I was playing the drums, and uh, a pastor told me some time ago, he said, you know, it does not look dignified for the bishop to play drums. I said, oh, you should sit in the pulpit that somebody else play the drums. I said, but you know, brother, um, when I first got saved, the first thing I did in church for years was play the drums. I didn't preach, I testified and sang, but I took... I praise God on them drums. And I promise God if you ever uh, uh, bless me whenever there's no drummer, I'll play the drums. All right. Yes, I got a clergy shirt on, but I can play the drums. Yes. Yeah. Now at my church, my daughter plays, my three grandsons play, and my other brothers, but I don't get to play anymore. So when I come in here, I see empty drums. I say, oh, yeah. Let me help Crystal Cross out a little bit. So now y'all can go back and say, Bishop Copeland is our drummer. <laughs> it's in my heart, a melody of love divine. It's in my heart, I'm his and he is mine. It's in my heart. I can't help but sing and shout. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Some folks sing to entertain some worldly throne. Some folks sing, but not to give God praise and song. But I sing to worship God in song. It's in my heart. It's in my heart. Some folks sing. Because they need the money, ain't that no choice? Some folks think sing because they feel they have the best voice. But I sing, give my God worship and rejoice. It's in my heart, it's in my heart. Some folks think just because sing just because they think they have a pretty voice. Some folks think because they do need the money, they don't have any choice. Isn't it wonderful that we sing to rejoice in God's voice? Right, now I know I've taken up enough of your time. Um, 
I told you, I told you last time I was here, praise God, that uh, in order for a sermon to be uh, eternal, it does not have to be everlasting. Amen. So I promise you, I'm not going to try to preach all day. Amen. But I want to preach from a very familiar passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And I'm going to skip around a few verses, verse 1, 5, 7, and 8. This was one of my pastor's favorite uh, verses to preach on. Whenever he went away to preach, he would always preach on Isaiah 6 and 1. Matter of fact, when we were coming up as teenagers, young people in the choir, we'd go with him. When they would introduce him, we'd already have our Bible open up to Isaiah 6 and 1. <laughs> The Bible said, verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Verse 5, So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and behold, I, be I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now here's a man who has a filthy mouth and he hangs around with people with filthy mouths. <laughs> Verse seven, and he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips and iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. I want to use as a subject this morning these words, God can use you. Look at your name and tell them God can use you. The book of Isaiah is a classic book in the Bible, not because of the prophet's bizarre escapades. Isaiah did some crazy things like walking around naked for three years. <laughs> But the book is a classic because, and not just because it is the thickest book in the Bible. It's not a classic because of the dramatic prophecies that have come true in the book. It's a classic because though Isaiah lived 700 years before Jesus was born, he wrote like he knew Jesus personally. Isaiah gives us vivid descriptions of graphic scenes that we read, and it flows from a pen like a poet, amen, who saw the miraculous birth of Jesus in Jerusalem as if he was there at his crucifixion and resurrection. Yeah. The Gospels are full of comments about Jesus fulfilling the prophecies of Isaiah, either one or another. Jesus didn't miss the connection either because we remember when he was in his hometown in the synagogue,